a aponeurotic extension starts running obliquely downward and medially and get fused with the deep fascia of the fora that is called the antibrachium fascia. A banded, put the banded whenever a banded side broad as well as long band of the aponeurotic band of the tendon of the bicep brachii runs obliquely up downward and medially and get fused with the deep fascia of the fora. This band is called the bicipital aponeurosis. Called bicipital aponeurosis. So it gives the extension to the insertion. And this traction of this aponeurosis will straighten the tendon of the bicep in all actions of the supination. So it makes the supination much more powerful because this bicepital strip of the aponeurosis is giving the anchoring the tendon of the bicep. Secondly, the brachial artery runs behind it and it protects the brachial artery. The deep fascia of the forearm is already there. Below the deep fascia, another strip is there that is called bicepital aponeurosis. And above this is bicep aponeurosis. There lies a obliquely running vein, which is called the median cubital vein. Median cubital vein separates the brachial artery from the by the bicepital aponeurosis. And this median cubital vein, we will see, there is a very frequent vein used for blood collection, for blood testing. If you go to the lab, where you got the blood test? This vein, median cubital vein. It lies just below the skin, easily available, bluish color. Easy to convenient to collect the blood sample from here. Plus, it is also very easy for the intravenous injections or intravenous drip if you have been ad ever admitted to the hospital so this vein is used for intravenous infusions so it is easily found but there are chances when you are pushing the needle the untrained nurse may pierce the vein and instead of taking intra in, instead of taking the venous blood sample that tip of your needle may go into the brachial artery and you got the arterial blood whose chemistry is totally different from the venous blood. So God has already separated them. A trained nurse know that whenever this medial cubital vein is pierced through and through, the hard aponeurosis of the bicipital will prevent its further leap. So that is the so the bicep aponeurosis will alarm the deep going tip of the needle for the collection of the venous blood. So that is another important part of the presence of this. So that's the biceps brachii. Regarding nerve supply, we already know. Nerve node in us, short head of the bicep, then pierce it, then it comes out. And then it enters into the long head and supplies it. And from the long head, this muscle veins comes on the media. Both the heads of the bicep brachii are supplied by the musculocutaneous muscle. Now the third muscle comes, brachialis. The muscle of the brachium or the arm is called the brachialis. So this muscle takes origin from the front of the shaft of the flat, flat shaft of the anterior surface of lower part of the front of the humerus. So this whole area, whenever you have to make the origin of the brachialis, very large origin, because it is a very powerful flexor at the elbow joint. Very powerful, more than, than the bicep. So this whole, this much area is the, showing you the origin of the brachialis. So brachialis muscle takes a extensive origin from the anterior surface of the brachial 
for the humerus and from here this muscle is coming downward. Rough surface of the coronoid process is waiting. So this muscle will be inserted on the anterior rough aspect of the ulnar coronoid surface of the upper end of the ulna. So this is the origin and insertion. So it takes from the lower one third of the shaft origin and inserting on not radius bone on the ulna. You have to remember which area a triangular rough anterior surface of coronoid process. See, this is the coracoid process. And Alna has got coronoid process. So don't confuse it. Don't say this is coronoid and that is coracoid. No. So that you have to remember what is coracoid, what is real life and coronoid. So what is the origin? Insertion, what is the action? So simple. Flexion at the elbow joint. That is the break here. Now the nerve supply. So musculoplanes after supplying the brachialis, three muscles, now comes and it supplies the brachialis. But which part of brachialis? Medial half, underline it. It only supplies medial half of the brachialis muscle. Brachialis muscle is a hybrid muscle. It is a muscle of, with a dual nerve supply. There are very rare muscles few muscles in the human body which enjoys two nerves to be supplied by them. So such muscles they are called hybrid muscle or called the muscle with the dual nerve supply. Underline hybrid muscles. The short note may come, right? Short note on the hybrid muscle. So don't confuse. So they are the hybrid muscles. In the upper limb there are two hybrid muscles. In the lower limb there is one hybrid muscle. So after supplying the medial half of the brachialis muscle, this musculoplanus nerve comes from its lateral aspect and runs in the superficie of the cubital fossa and enters the forearm and goes pierces the deep fascia, lateral of the forearm, and then it runs in the superficial fascia of the lateral aspect of the forearm as the lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm. It is continued as lateral cutaneous nerve. So it supplies the lateral part of the skin of the forearm, this area. Up to the from elbow joint to the wrist joint. The whole this area is covered by musculocutaneous branch. So that is the sensory nerve supply. As far as skin. So that's why it is named as musculocutaneous nerve. After supplying muscles, it supplies the skin. Now the muscle comes the extensor carpi radialis longus. So as the name suggests, brachioradialis. The name is brachioradialis. So it takes origin from brachium, bone of the brachium. So it takes origin from the upper two-third of the lateral border of the humerus. Upper two-third of the lateral border of the humerus just in front of the lateral intermuscular septum. Thus it also takes them from a little bit from the anterior surface of the septum also. Brachioradialis. Then this muscle, as name is radialis. So this muscle from the origin goes downward. And radialis means it will be inserted on radius. So go into the name. Why it is named as brachioradialis? From the bone of brachium to the bone of radius. The lower end of the radius is big and bear the styloid process laterally. So this muscle is inserted on styloid process of the radius. That's why its name is brachioradialis. What is the action? Again, flexion at the end. So they are the flexor compartment. All muscles they are compartment, they are flexor group. So brachioradialis. So lower end of the ulna is also having the styloid process, which is medially direct. So remember, upper end of the radius is narrow, lower end is expanded, opposite the ulna. Upper end of the ulna is big, lower end is narrow. Both bear styloid process. But the level of the styloid process is very important to remember. Styloid process of the radius is lower in position, while the styloid process of the ulna is higher in position, if you make them parallel. 
So they are not at equal. Only certain portions of the radius and alveolar comes back well. At same level, only in the fracture of the lower end of the radius, which is a very common fracture called the colysis fracture. So in the colysis fracture, the both the shadow process of the radius and alveolar comes in the same line. So without taking X-ray, we can diagnose that he or she got the colysis fracture at the lower end of the expanded to the lower end of the radius. Then the last muscle is extensor carpi radial is longer. So first word of the muscle is telling that its action is doing the extension. Carpi means it will go to the carpal bones of the wrist. Radialis means which carpal bones? On the radial side, below the radius. And longus means it is longer, it means some small muscle is also waiting. And that's name is extensor carpi radialis brevis. So longus means it is long, insertion is there. So this muscle taken in from lower one third of the lateral border of the humerus, just below the origin of the brachial radialis and adjoining part of the front of the, the lateral intramural septum. So this muscle goes deep to the tender of the brachial radialis and enters the wrist, and in the wrist, it will be inserted on the carpal bones on the lateral aspect of the wrist. That is scaphoid, trapezium, and the capitate. That we will do later on when we do the wrist. Job. So this is how we do the origin insertion of the muscle. Now the nerve supply. As we know, there is a lateral intramuscular septum. From the back of the arm you have done yesterday, you know what is radial groove, what is radial nerve, continuation of posterior cord is continued as radial nerve. Radial nerve comes later to the shaft of the humerus and this radial nerve lies in front of the lateral intramuscular septum in the anterior compartment of arm. Coming from posterior compartment, now radial nerve is seen in the front of the arm where it lies anterior to the septum, lateral intramuscular septum. And three muscles are waiting for taking the nerve supply. One is brachioradialis, second is extensor carpal radialis longus, and third is underlying lateral half of the brachialis. Lateral half of the brachialis muscle is inserted. Now it has got two nerve supply, medial half by musculocranius and lateral half is by So this is how we do the original insertion of this. Last muscle is deltoid. Deltoid is called deltoid because it is from geography. There is a the word delta. Who is very fond of geography? Anybody? Raise your hand. Geography. What is delta? Delta what means? Dwaba, Jalandhar, Navashair, Banga. Who are from there? Raise your hand. Who are from Jalandhar? Jalandhar is a delta. So land of the land between the two rivers. Between Vyas and Satalit is the Dudhyana, Jalandhar, Banga, Namashair is called the delta. So this muscle is triangular in shape, delta-like. Superiorly it is big and inferiorly it is long. It is a multi-pinnate muscle, multi-pinnate. From its delta is insertion, three or four Aphrodotic fibrous septa goes upward. Three or four. And in these septa, from above, muscles are present. So it makes a very powerful action of the muscle. Multi pinnate. Pinnate means like a pinna. Digits. Digitation. So, origin of this muscle is very important. Number one, we have already done it. Only you have to compile. From where? Anybody? Origin of deltoid, delto pectoral groove. Taken from lateral one third of the anterior border of the clavicle. Number two origin, write down. Lateral surface of the acromion process of the scapula. They are, they are called the middle fibers. Anterior fibers from the lateral one third of clavicle, lateral fibers from 
lateral surface of the acromion process of the spine of the scapula. Number three, origin from the lower border of the spine of the scapula. Acromion process and posteriorly if you see from the Lower part of the spine of the scapula is the origin of posterior fibers of deltoid. Middle fibers are from the acromion process. And anterior fibers from the acromioclavicular joints and from the clavicle, the anterior one. So that is the back side of the deltoid and this is the front of the deltoid. So origin insertion in the deltoid velocity. And between these interdistance, there lies the deltoid muscle like this. So that's why the contraction becomes more powerful. Deltoid, delta like. Origin, insertion. What is the action now? The action is different. This is special. Number one, anterior fibers. From clavicle to the deltoid to cross the lateral aspect. When they contract, what they will bring about? Flexion. Number two, medial rotation. Number three, adduction. Here, and TF fibers. Middle fiber from acron acromial process. Where they are inserted, delta to process. What will be the action of the middle fibers? Abduction. How much? 15 to 90 degrees. From one zero to 15 degrees done by supra spinal, and 15 to 90 by Delta. Which fiber? That is important. Middle fibers only. Not anterior, not posterior. Only middle fibers. Third action, posterior fibers. In the posterior fibers. Inserting on the humerus. What is the action? Posterior fibers, they bring the extension. Number two, lateral rotation. Posterior fibers. So that is the action. In all movements of the shoulder joint, flexion, extension, adduction, abduction, middle rotation, and lateral rotation, that is what is there. So that is important about the action, origin, as well as this. But which fibers, anterior, middle, or posterior, that you have to remember. That you have to remember. Then comes the nerve supply. The nerve supply of the deltoid is circumflex nerve or the axillary nerve. And axillary nerve is the branch of from brachial plexus. Where, where do come the axillary nerve? From the posterior cord. Four branches. Out of four, this is the axillary nerve. So axillary nerve is also called circumflex nerve. Why? Because it, after taking origin from the posterior cord, which is continued as radial nerve. Radial groove you have done yesterday. And radial groove lies just below the delta to cross. So radial nerve is going. From its radial nerve comes the, from the posterior cord, which nerve comes? Axillary nerve or circumflex. It goes deep to the delta muscle and supplies it as it is passing. As it is encircling the delta, you know, the humerus, and going in front, reaching the biceptal groove. There you find. From here, it goes back and then comes in front. So it goes around and circle the shaft and humerus. That's why it's called circumflex nerve. Root value C5, C6, C7. And it is accompanied by the artery that called posterior circumflex humeral artery. Same name, name. Vein, posterior circumflex humeral vein. So both the veins and artery and nerve, they come from the lateral aspect to the front of the surgical neck of the humerus. So it is considered the surgical neck. That's why surgical neck, because in the fracture is very common, and which nerve is injured? Axillary. So that is important. So both the vessels and the nerve, they are touching the surgical neck. And that is fractured, and trapping the axillary nerve, leading to the paralysis of the deltoid. That is the applied. Origin, insertion, action, nerve supply, and apply. Now, as this axillary nerve is passing, 
that it is surgical neck. Another muscle enjoys its nerve supply. We take it from the lateral aspect of the lateral border of the scapula. As we know from the lateral border of the scapula, two muscles take origin. From the lower one third, serious major. And from the dorsal surface, latissimus, dorsi. From upper two third, serious minor muscle is going to insert on the greater tubercle. On the aspect, sit, as sight is sit, T for serious minor. Attachment of the greater tubercle, how to remember? Sit formula. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and serious minor. Serious minor is inserting below the deltoid going. Inserting on the Later aspect of greater tubercle. As it is marching, then the nerve from the axillary nerve, D to the deltoid, runs vertically upward and enters the lower part of the teres minor and supplies it. So this is called the nerve to teres minor. So teres minor is also supplied by circumflex nerve, axillary nerve. Another speciality of this nerve is this nerve has got a pseudo ganglion. If the swelling is there on the nerve to the TS minor, it is a pseudo ganglion. Why it is pseudo ganglion? Because it is not a true ganglion. What is ganglion? Cluster of the neurons. But it is not neurons. It is made up of nervous connective tissue. No neuron is present. That's why it's called pseudo ganglion. So that is why. The last one is the applied. So whenever the surgical neck is fractured, which is the most common point of the fracture of the humerus, the circumflex nerve, my finger is circumflex nerve, is liable to be cut and trapped between the fragments. And it may be crushed and damaged. So immediately patient has to be shifted to the operation table. We have to remove the fragments and we have to repair the nerve, then only it's possible. Otherwise, patient will suffer from paralysis of two muscles. Here is minor and so another applied of the deltoid is nowadays corona. Where the corona injections are given vaccine? In which muscle? Number one is it is very much used for intramuscular injections. Number two applied that whenever it is damaged, paralyzed, then this roundness of the shoulder is lost. This shoulder, the roundness of the shoulder. We make the shoulder like this, roundness. This roundness, who is maintaining? Deltoid. Deltoid muscle below this. It is the roundness. So roundness contour of the shoulder is done by the deltoid. So whenever the axis nerve is damaged, this deltoid contour will be lost. And what will be happen? There will be flattening. Shoulder will be flattened. And we can easily touch the head of the humerus. Usually, you can't touch it. But here it becomes supported. So whenever a patient comes to a doctor's clinic, especially a female in the summer wearing the sleeveless, only by seeing the roundness of the loss of the contour of the shoulder, he can diagnose that she is suffering from axial nerve form. So roundness is only maintained by this. This should be the vigilance of a doctor, a physician. This guard spot diagnosis. Without seeing, without X-ray, without examination, just by seeing you can diagnose this is the this. Third applied, deltopectoral groove. As you know, the pectoral major comes from the medial aspect. And it has to go below the deltoid. It has to insert on the later lip of bicipital groove. So from the anterior border of the deltoid, the pectoral major muscle is going downward because you are taking only from medial half of the clavicle. And this gap is there for clavipectoral tissue. So this groove between the pectoral major muscle and the deltoid and what is called the deltopectoral groove. And two things are very particular about this groove. Always here a very particular vein line which pierces the clavipectoral fascia and goes into subclavian and clavian. Which was the vein? Catholic vein always lies in the deltopectoral group. Number two, what else it contains? Deltoid branch of the thoraco 
that grow me a lot. So this vein is quite big vein and is very much used in emergency to save the life-saving vein. So whenever a patient comes with a peripheral circulatory failure, PCF, peripheral circulatory failure, he is in shock, cardiogen especially, when heart is very, very slow, pulse is dipping down, pulse is only 10 or 15 instead of 72, blood pressure is only 10, 20, patient is going to die, both BP and pulse, they are dipping downward. Patient requires immediately intravenous injections of adrenaline and noradrenaline. They are called the inotropes. They are called the heart tonics. So nurse will running, coming to running to a doctor that I am not getting any vein visible on the patient. Patient is in the shock. Skin is cold and calmy. He or she is going to die. I can't find any vein. For the injection, then where you will find? Deltopectoral. You give blind prick here. You give the blind tip of the needle, insert in the deltopectoral because patient is in the shock. PCF or hypovolemia. No fluid is there, dehydrated state. Any state may be there, but muscle they are there. Muscle they are intact in the shock house. So we can easily found the deltopectoral groove and we put a blind prick in this groove and immediately what we see, blood is coming in the syringe. Then we inject safely the life-saving drugs. So very important. You can save the life of the patient if you know the anatomy of the deltopectoral groove. That Catholic vein is 150% sure will be found there. Even the patient is in the shock. So they all about the 